Central, The Nightly Show, was Larry Wilmore the Golden Globe Award and People's Choice Award winning TV series, Transparent, on Amazon Prime. As a stand-up comic, he opened for Margaret Cho and has become a cross-country headline himself. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the stage, Ian Harvey. <laughs> Trans Pride in LA. I'm always in Maine this time of year, and I happen to be here this year, and thank you for having me. It's what a great fucking celebration. Um, so yeah, I'm trans. You guys are like, no shit. Uh, <laughs> this is such a nice audience because I don't have to explain a lot of shit. Usually when I say I'm trans in a regular comedy club, everybody's eyes just drop to this part of my body down here, and everybody tries to figure out what the fuck's going on. And uh, People get confused. They're like, I don't. So what do you do? Do you do you do you do you have a dick? Do you? I don't understand. Do you do you do do you have a dick? And I'm like, yeah. It's just not on me right now. <laughs> it's back at the house. Uh, I'm a lazy packer, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I am. I'm a super lazy packer. I just I can't be bothered. I don't know. It's weird. Like you know what? Sometimes I do. Like last minute, if I think I. I'm going to an event or something, and I feel like, you know, I might throw a fucking sock in there, you know? So, feeling sporty, throw a tube sock in there. Heading back to Maine, it's gonna be cold, throw a fucking wool sock in there, you know? So, I love people that just get so curious. People after shows, if you do stuff like this, the, people say the weirdest, most, like, bla br just brazen shit to you after shows. Some girl came up to me after a show and she was like, oh my god, you're so hot, you're like Brad Pitt with a vagina. I'm like, oh my god, that is awesome. I'm like the real fucking Brangelina. That's fucking great. I love that. I love it. I feel bad for guys that have their own dick attached. Now hear me out. I do, I feel bad. If you were a guy in the audience, have your own dick attached, and I want to, I just want to say I feel bad for you, because, oh, I, people say is it hard to be trans, and it, because they think because of the whole, like, me not having a dick, that's the problem. Like, no, I think it's fucking great. It's fucking great, because basically, I want to just say, when I got together, when you get together with someone that has their own dick attached, basically you get what you get, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of a grab bag out there. But if you go out with me, we'll get you what you want. got together, she and I were at, went to the sex toy shop, as we do, which I also feel bad, because you know a lot of people don't get to do that. Queers get to do that more than anybody else, and I fucking love it. It's for that time in the relationship, it's a very special moment where you know you're gonna get down, and you're like, okay, we're gonna go to the sex shop. So we go, and um, I want her to have what she wants, of course, and I want it to be a blend of what I want, so we compromised, and I got an 8 by 6 chocolate brown dick. <laughs> I, uh, I named it. I named it Gung Gung. <laughs> After that sound on Law and Order. Because <laughs> that's the sound it makes when you take it out. And, um, <laughs> I like to argue with my guy friends that have their own dick and match. I'm like, dude, like, if I could take my shit off anytime I want, can you do that shit? And, you know, I'm like, well, if you could, when would you do that? And my friend goes, I don't know if I saw a snowman that needed a nose. <laughs> <laughs> you take that shit off and throw it in the dishwasher like I can? No. <laughs> Turn it to cocks and pans, I got a heavy load. <laughs> Here's what's happening to me now. Everywhere I go, look at me. I, I just realized I look like a dad out of the L.O. Bean catalog. Um, or a gay bear. That's what I look like. I pass as a gay guy now everywhere I go. It's, I don't mind, but I just, I don't have any experience with dudes. And so uh, it's one of those things that like when I am out in a gay bar and I hold my girlfriend's hand, I know that gay guys are looking at my girlfriend and they look at me and they look back at my girlfriend and they go, oh, that poor girl. <laughs> He is gonna break her heart. And I'm gonna help. Yeah, I know. 
I was over in Silver Lake at this club with some friends. I was getting some drinks, and I started talking to this guy. He started chatting me up, and I started getting nervous. I was like, shit, oh my god, I've never been hit on by a guy. When I was visibly female-bodied with big old girls on my chest, I absolutely never got hit on by dudes, ever, ever. And this guy started chatting me up, but I felt nervous. I was like, listen, dude, I gotta be honest with you. I'm trans, and I'm female-bodied, and I have a girlfriend, and I just don't think I'm what you're looking for. He's like, oh, that's cool, that's cool. And he started to walk off, and he's like, wait a second. He had this revelation. He's like, you mean you have two holes to choose from? <laughs> um, that's fucking rude. He ignored my third hole. <laughs> what a bitch. job in my whole I was 16 I was drunk in Maine on a wood road party that just says it all okay and I was wasted and my neighbor it was like that teenage kind of 17 16 somewhere in there and my neighbor his let's just call him John Neff because that was his fucking name and um, <laughs> and I was wasted sitting on this giant log and he came over he was wasted and he pulled his dick out of his face just come on suck it and I was like oh you I don't know, I didn't know what to do, so I just like batted away, tried to get him away. And finally, this is as close as I ever have come to giving a blowjob. Basically, I used it as a handrail to get the fuck out of there, and that's what I did. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what to do with him. Um, man, I, uh, so I, I have to tell you, I, I, my parents are amazing. My, par my family is amazing. They, I do have a, a great family. I have the blessed story that, you know, my parents didn't bat an eyelash, you know, when I told them that I was trans. I actually I actually came out to them in a letter, a very long letter, telling them about how my whole life, even though they knew me my whole life, I told them about my life and uh, and how I felt in my body. And, uh, and my parents were, they were really fucking great about it. And my mom is so funny because she doesn't do this with malice. She's 75, she's just older and she forgets. And we go out to places in public when I'm back home visiting and she's like, Janet, come here. <laughs> I don't know, it's fine, I'm not upset by it, she, but I come running up and she looks like she's fucking crazy. <laughs> the woman at the register is like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I realized what happened, I said, Mom, you know, if you keep talking like that, they're gonna put you in a home. <laughs> so she does better, she does better. But here's what's worse, is my grandmother, who is 98, lives with my parents and she has full-on dementia, total full-on Alzheimer's, and I come home and my mother is prepping my grandmother over and over and over again that Janet's coming home for a visit. <laughs> Janet's gonna be her visit. And I walk in and she's like, who are you? And my mom goes, that's Janet! <laughs> and I know my grandmother's like, I'm not the fucking crazy one here. <laughs> that's not Janet. <laughs> car keys back now I'd like to go home um, my grandmother she's awesome uh, man. Uh, I, so my parents uh, we've had to, they've had to deal with a lot of information and, and uh, one of the things that my parents had to deal with was that my dad I don't know if uh, you guys know this about my dad my dad was like that diagnosed with prostate cancer and I want to it's, it's fine he's gonna be fine he was treated he's gonna be fine but I got nervous and I went on the Google and I started researching I don't know if you know this but gay guys get prostate cancer way less than straight guys because of the kind of sex they like to have a massage of the prostate and I can't help but think, I know some happy healthy faces in here. Um, <laughs> cancer free bitch, yeah I know. Um, but uh, so I, you know, the kind of sex you like to have a massage of the prostate and I can't help but think that this whole thing with my dad could have been avoided. <laughs> my dad loves that joke. <laughs> They're amazing, they're amazing. I, um, I have to say, you know what, I was, I'm, I know there's a lot of mixed messages out there about uh, Caitlyn Jenner um, coming out. I think it's fucking wonderful, um, because it's, for, for the generation of people, like my parents, that I was like the only trans person that they knew, to like have someone like Jenner come out was a whole new frame of reference that it kind of happens to everybody across all generations and all types of people and so that was really cool for my parents but I started thinking about it I was like wait a second you know wait a second like with all the surgeries collectively that the Kardashians have had isn't Jenner like the eighth in the family to be trans yeah. <laughs> So, um, you know, actually, you know what, I, I, uh, I, I, um, 
I love being trans. I am all, I'm very proud. I was watching the video and I, when people were saying that they, they loved it or it was a struggle. And I, you know, I want to say that I love being trans, but there's still a couple places in my life where I still get a little schmarmy, uncomfortable, and like the men's room is one of them. Um, I still like beeline to the stall and I'm paranoid that my pee is going to sound different than his pee. <laughs> Shit, I'm like, can you fucking tell? I don't know. I'm, like, I'm so worried. I just like, I rock back and forth going, I've got a secret. <laughs> And you know what, I'm so glad that testosterone made my menstrual cycle go away because can you imagine me in the men's room having to change up my shit, crinkling and crackling in the stall next to you? Can you imagine that shit, crinkling and crackling? The dude next to you is like, what's that over there, man? It's just a baby roof, man, just a baby roof. My, my one fearful place. And I just wanna, I wanna say that I know that my trans sisters out there, all of you have it way harder than I do and I love you. Um, and um, I, you know what, since I have the mic for just a second, I'm gonna say something, I don't know if it's being discussed or not because I haven't kept up on it for sure, but I think the HRC should take all its money and put it towards trans rights movement. <laughs> marriage is gonna fucking happen. <laughs> marriage is gonna happen, right? But I think what trumps marriage is trans people's lives. People living. I think that that shows marriage in my book any day of the week. So fucking flip that money to great organizations like the Gender Justice League and other fucking organizations. That, and I don't know, I just think that someone should start calling them out. I just did it. You're welcome to do it too. And um, listen, before I go, I wanted to say something that I, I really, I, and you're all beautiful as uh, 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 Alexander was singing, we're all these beautiful freaks. Uh, and I just, I, I love going through uh, TSA when I travel, because I only travel with a carry-on bag. And um, I bring um, Gung Gung with me. And um, <laughs> I just want to say something. Like, don't get nervous. If you're bringing sex toys or you're bringing your body parts with you, don't get nervous about that shit, because the joke's on fucking them. They're handling your shit. Don't get nervous. Get righteous. Get righteous and just be, just own that shit. Someone like Sir was like, can I, you know, of course, you know they can see that shit in the bag in the fucking x-ray machine. You know they see that fucking thing. You know they do. <laughs> like, can I check your bag? So I said, no, have a look, have a look. I don't mind, go for it. And he starts, he finds a velvet bag that Goon Goon is, and he doesn't open it. He just starts swinging it back and forth. <laughs> trying to guess what's in it. Feeling it up and down, feeling it up and down. He's like, can you tell me what's in the bag, sir? I said, that's my cock, sir. <laughs> Just own it. Just own it. <laughs> now, if you ever want to end a bag search, that's all you have to say. <laughs> Thank you very much. I love you. Going to say, okay? Give it, why don't you give another hand, guys, for us? Because we're not wonderful. <laughs>